All right, so gonna get a few more videos filmed right now. One quick note, it is known now that the tests in different parts like of the world were different ordered questions than what we had here. It was also different if the local US centers printed a copy of the test for the students to work on versus the one on the screen. The questions were in a different order. So for those of you who feel like, hey, that's not the right question, they all got changed around probably to protect test integrity and to make it harder for people to cheat. So for, that, for those who would just send answers or whatnot in groups of batches, now you can't do that. You'd have to have more information. So that was a good move on their part in my opinion, but it might mean some of these numbers are a little bit different than what you saw on your paper. Uh, the first three terms of a geometric sequence are the integers A, 720, and B. Okay, so A, 720B where a is between a is less than 720 and 720 is less than b what is the sum of the digits of the least possible value of b okay so the one thing you might do is you we saw integers right so you say well wouldn't i want this to be like 360 because you know 1 times 720 uh, I'd have to multiply B by 720. So if I went the other direction where I created 2 and 360, but I made the A 360, can't I not do any better than that? Because I would double it, right? And you get 720 and you double that. You get 1440, you add up the digits and you get 9. And it seems pretty solid. They did say integers, but let's think back to a very common geometric sequence, four, six, nine. These are all integers. And of course, six is the geometric mean of four and nine. That is nine over six equals six over four, but our common ratio is not an integer. And so this is your common ratio right there. Four times three over two is six, six times three over two being nine. Then maybe that could be going on here. How would we know then what to use? Like how, what fraction could you use? And it kind of has to do with how you think of this. 720 needs to be A times R. And B needs to be 720 times R. So, our common ratio being a fraction, think about it as like 720 times, let's say, C over D. Then wouldn't D have to divide into 720? This is your common ratio equals C over D. You're not going to get an integer for B unless this is a divisor of 720. Further, if I went the other way, 720 divided by uh, R, because you're going back to this, A could be equal right, to 720 divided by the common ratio, just as if I took 6 over here and divided it by 3 over 2, I would get 4, because 6 times 2 thirds is 4. Same thing. So then if I do 720 divided by this fraction, it would be 720 times D over C. So the, de the numerator and the denominator must both be divisors of 720, and that means we should probably prime factor to get a little bit better idea of what we're doing. We still might not know exactly what our goal is, but we'll get a better idea if we had it prime factored. So you're going to say 9 times 8 times 2 times 5. Of course, the 2 and the 8 is 2 to the 4th. 9 is 3 squared and 5 to the 1st. Okay, so now that we have that, and I know I'm making a fraction that has to be made of these parts basically but do i need all of the parts do i have to include everything in there no i mean it could be like 1 16th or something if i wanted to and that would be fine because when i multiplied by 16 over 1 it would work but if i'm trying to make b as small as possible the least possible value of b then i would want to multiply and it has to be getting larger by the way b is larger than 720 I'm gonna have to have our common ratio be greater than one in order to accomplish that. Well, think about it. If you multiplied, uh, let's say nine by four over three, or nine by five over four, or nine by six over five, 
notice that the ratio is getting closer and closer to one, what will happen is that the overall value of the next term will go down because you're basically not increasing 720 by that much. It's really close to one, right? So then that's the objective now. The objective is to go ahead and find some collection of these where there's something in the numerator, something in the denominator, such that it's as close to one as you can get. So you might play around with, you're like, okay, well, what if I took eight and nine, right? Nine over eight, that's pretty good, right? Nine over eight, and I would also be multiplying by nine eighths. That would be my common ratio here, because it has to be more than one, like we said. Can we do any better, though? As you notice, as the three over two becomes four over three becomes five over four becomes six over five, that common ratio is going down the whole time. So as long as these are within one, you know, if I went to 10 over nine, it would be better. Is there anything I could do that could get, same thing, really close to one, like one number apart, but bigger denominator? Um, what's the next bigger denominator above eight? What if I had nine? Oh, I have 10 over nine. That's a little better. Okay, can I, like, you had two and a five there and the three square in the bottom. Okay, what about, what else could I get? What's the next thing above 10 that I could get to or above nine for that matter? Do I, I could do 10, is there a way to do 10 with something? There's no 11, of course, I could do 12, but that's six over five and it's worse than these two. So 13, no, 14, no, and what are we doing? It's called guess and check. You just check it out, what would happen if? Could I do 15 in the denominator? 14's not there, there's no sevens. Oh, 15, wait a minute, that gives me one of these threes, one of the fives, so the only five, but one of the threes, and I've got 16 right here. That's pretty good. Okay, well, what if I went a little bit higher than that? Could I get anything bigger than the 15? And you could say, you know, 16, but at that point, your numerator, not, not 19, your numerator at that point is nine times five, 45, we're not close, we can't do 15. Okay, so what's the next available thing above 16? Um, could I do two to the third times three? Um, two to the third times three would be 24, eight times three. And if I did that, I would have a two times three times five. That's 30, not better. We don't get 25 or anything like that, or 26. So it looks like 24 is not gonna have an option that we could do. Um, what else might we use? Um, trying to think of what else you could think of. Uh, 16, eight times three, eight, yeah. What about two squared times three squared is 36. But again, you're not gonna be able to get 38. You don't have a 19 or 37, you don't have that. What about 40? Eight times five is 40, but what does that reduce to? That's just 10 over nine again. It looks a lot to me like this is gonna be the best that you can do after a little bit of inspection. So then you're gonna to have to say, okay, well, if I multiply um, 720, actually we'll just take the, the, the prime factored version, it'll be easier to do it with. You have 16 times nine times five, and you're multiplying that by 16 over 15. So you'll cancel this out with the three and the five, and you'll cancel this, and you'll have 16 squared, 256 times three, 750 plus 18 is 768. So 768 is 13 plus eight, answer 21. Uh, that's it for this one. Let's see if we can get a few more film tonight.